Well, good afternoon. I honestly thought I was going to be sitting around a table with uh, uh, about 10 old professors like me, and uh, this, is, this is a bit of a surprise. Uh, one thing I didn't quite understand, uh, Dr. Garrison said uh, I came from up north. I thought this is coal country. Did you say cold? All right, sorry. Okay, that's a bad pun. Um, <clears throat> the uh, title of the talk is uh, Wrongful Conviction and Criminal Justice System Reform. And um, I'm, I'm going to start a little bit. Well, I, actually, before I start, um, I um, understand that there are graduate students here who uh, are in um, a uh, criminal justice externship doing, working on um, wrongful conviction cases. Is that, the, is that true? There's nobody here who's, who's in that class. How many besides one? How many? Okay. They are? Uh, I was actually going to mention uh, Dr. Kraska. Um, uh, because the title Wrongful Conviction and Criminal Justice System Reform has really three themes in it. Uh, one is wrongful conviction, and I thought that I would not say very much about wrongful conviction to faculty members because I assumed that they had some basic knowledge about uh, the growing awareness that wrongful convictions do occur with some regularity in criminal justice and for the sheet that I had actually prepared for this morning's class, typical factors that are associated uh, with or, quote, cause convictions, mistaken eyewitness, false confessions, et cetera, each one of those is like a, a, a lecture in one of my classes, so I could, I could talk for hours and hours on that. And I assume that faculty are generally aware of the, the dynamics that seem to generate wrongful convictions. But uh, maybe I will, I will go back and, um, uh, and say a few things uh, about the, the so-called causes of wrongful conviction. <clears throat> what I wanted to, to talk about, I think, may, may still be uh, of some interest to you. It's, it's not um, hard, to, hard to understand. Um, it, it, I, I just don't know if it would be as interesting. <clears throat> I wanted to start by suggesting that um, my encounter with the topic of wrongful conviction says things about the nature of criminal justice as an academic field. And it, it, the way in which criminal justice is distinguished from law, or, or, or to put it in a different way, the way people who teach criminal justice and people who teach law in a criminal justice program come at the subject somewhat differently. And that may be a topic that maybe is more interesting to academics, but I'm, I, I do want to say a few things about that. Then I was going to say a few things about wrongful conviction, but not about going through the list of causes, certain other things which I plan to say in any event, and then end with talking about the, the possibility and nature of reform. Now, one of the things that sort of leads me to talk about a link between the subject of wrongful conviction, which, by the way, is a class that I teach, so that there are law schools that teach seminars on wrongful conviction. I teach a class in the criminal justice department at Wayne State University. And there are, in addition to that, um, uh, uh, innocence projects at law schools, which are uh, practicum courses or internship courses, where law students actually work on real cases. People, often by the thousands, send in letters from prison saying I was wrongfully convicted, I can't get anybody to listen to me, I've already had my appeals, I don't have a free lawyer, but there's DNA out there somewhere, or there are people who know that I didn't do it, can you help me? And it's a tall order, and uh, the, the faculty who run those programs will then be utilizing student labor to patiently and carefully go through the reams of files and filings uh, uh, to try to uh, get to the bottom of some of these cases. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, but ultimately, at the end, when I talk about criminal justice system reform, uh, I have a belief that uh, appreciating wrongful conviction, and I mean appreciating that it exists on the part of people in criminal justice, can uh, be useful to changing the criminal justice system in a direction that makes it more professional. And as criminal justice students, I think you should be uh, as interested in that, perhaps more so than faculty members, uh, wanting uh, to go into a forward-looking, modern, effective, efficient uh, criminal justice system that gets things right uh, as best as possible. Um, I have a very important question. Uh, since I've been known to talk at length, what, what, what time do I stop talking? 4.30. 4.30, okay. Um, I, think, I think it may be better for uh, anyone here who's got a question to sort of raise your hand right in the middle. I, I often raise a hand on myself. St I drive students nuts because I'll, I, so I sometimes will sort of uh, step out of the pocket, to use a football metaphor, and start talking about stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the, uh, with the lecture. So uh, uh, if there's something that, you know, you have a burning question or, or God forbid, I confuse you, uh, uh, just raise your hand, I'll stop, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll take a question. Okay. First of all, um, what does... How does my in encounter shed... So oh, I'm sorry. Here. One other thing I think I should say. Uh, if, I, if I said this to the faculty, I don't think it would, it would sound so bad. Uh, but um, I became interested in teaching this topic about three years ago, and uh, I, um, uh, I started teaching it, but I I'm, I'm also have become very interested in writing about it. So... Uh, I wrote one article um, on innocence projects, so to speak, uh, uh, for uh, the, uh, the uh, criminal law bulletin uh, a couple of years ago. And I have an article that's coming out in Criminal Justice Policy Review entitled Criminal Justice System Reform and Wrongful Conviction, a Research Agenda, which would really be deadly. I won't, I won't lay that all out on you. And then I've got three other articles that are being considered by, by journals right now. And while I'm working, I'm, I'm, I'm working on all of these topics in, 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 uh, on wrongful conviction. Uh, and what I was saying to the faculty was that you're sort of getting me midstream because uh, wrongful conviction criminal justice system reform is something that I want to write about in book form. So some of these ideas may be a little, a little floaty today, uh, you know, not, not all that firmed up, but, uh, you know, when we're writing stuff, we, we have to go through a process of thinking it out and getting it half right and half wrong. At the same time, uh, I happen to have written an article that's going to be published that is largely about Peter Kraska's book, uh, uh, Theorizing Criminal Justice. Uh, and the article and Peter's book, of course, Dr. Kraska's book, forces me to really think seriously about what the heck criminal justice is all about. Uh, and I think it's a tremendous uh, advance. I mean, I think very highly of the book. I made some critical comments about it. But uh, so I, what I was going to do with the faculty was try to blend, these, blend these, two, these two things together. So I may make some references to, uh, to Dr. Kraska's book. Okay, let me start with this observation. Here's a, a quote from uh, this article that I'm, that I'm writing, and uh, it reflects something that Richard Leo, if you've done wrongful conviction, you've come across Richard Leo's name uh, with the subject of confessions, false confessions. And I spoke about that at some length this morning. Paradoxically, while wrongful conviction has generated extensive legal psychological and forensic science research, the subject has not been significantly addressed by criminal justice scholars. 